Today we're counting down the top 10 native freshwater fish in the UK. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button. For this list, we're looking at species of fish that live in or commonly associated with fresh water and considered to be native to the British Isles. Non-natives will feature on a future list. Number 10, Arctic char. Arctic char are members of the Salmonid family and glacial relics from the last ice age. With snow melting, these fish were trapped in many lakes and lochs of northern Britain, including the Lake District in England, Snowdonia in Wales, and Scotland, which is a stronghold for these fish, being found in over 250 lochs. They mostly live in the depths of these lakes, so are rarely encountered by anglers. They live up to their Arctic name by being the most northerly freshwater fish in the world, living in lakes and rivers too cold for their trout and salmon cousins. One of the major threats to Arctic char is the acidification of waterways, whether this is from rain, pollution, or even conifer trees. Number nine, barbel. These cyprinids are found naturally in the eastern flown rivers of England, but have since been introduced for angling into the Severn, Wye, and Chalk streams. The barbel gets its name from the whisker-like appendages around its mouth, which it uses to search for food, anything from invertebrates to small fish when bigger. The UK record currently stands at over 20 pounds, with anything over 10 pounds considered a good sized fish. They are perfectly designed for rivers, having a slanted down head which water flows over, pushing them nearer the riverbed, allowing barbel to effortlessly glide in the current. Number eight, roach. Perhaps the most adaptable cyprinid in Britain, it's found all over the country, in canals, lakes, rivers and ponds. Despite not getting to huge sizes, roach can live up to 18 years old, and a fish that's quite tolerant of poor water quality, so often found in urban waterways. Roach are known to hybridise with closely related species, like the bream, which have a deeper body, and the rud, which are more golden and an upturned mouth. The roach has an upper jaw that protrudes below the lower jaw, ideal for bottom feeding but will take food from the surface also. Number seven, tench. Sometimes called the doctor fish, it was once thought its slime had healing properties to other fish, although this has since been proven to just be smaller fish trying to transfer their own parasites to the unwilling tench. Found in ponds and slow moving rivers, its rounded fins make it unable to live in fast flows. Its distinctive green color helps it blend into weeds and it's one of the only coarse fish that is sexually dimorphic year-round. Males have curly pectoral fins and a bulge on their flanks. Female tench lack these and grow much larger than the males. Number six, brown trout. These are the most genetically diverse vertebrates in the world, coming in thousands of different variations and shapes. Like sea trout, which spend most of their time in salt water, only returning to breed in rivers. Others include the ferox trout, a huge glacial trout that turns cannibal, and small river trout, which can survive in tiny upland streams. So favoured were brown trout that during the British Empire, these fish were transported all over the world so generals and nobles could indulge in some fly fishing, leading to brownies inhabiting New Zealand, South Africa, and Canada, to name a few. Number five, Atlantic salmon. Often associated with Scotland, the Atlantic salmon can be found all over Britain, where water quality and suitable habitat allow. Unlike its Pacific cousins, not all Atlantic salmon die after breeding, and will go back out to sea and return to the river to spawn another year. They enter the lower reaches of rivers, sporting a bright silver colour. But over time in fresh water, the fish's body begins to change. The colour of the salmon becomes more golden brown, and more drastic in male fish, the skeletal structure of the jaw becomes hooked and sharp teeth emerge to fight off competition for spawning rights. In highland streams, it can take salmon par three years before they grow big enough to go to sea, while in chalk streams, the par can go just one year with the abundance of food available. Number four, grayling. Referred to as the lady of the stream, Grayling look like they could be on a coral reef rather than British rivers. The term Lady of the Stream 
comes from its large dorsal fin, which had a dress-like look to it. Although ironically, males have the larger and more flamboyant fin. Unlike other British Salmonids, grayling are spring spawners, and males turn a deep black colour during the breeding season. They will fight for attention for female fish, and when she's selected a mate, he'll vibrate next to her and drape his dorsal fin over as they spawn. The Latin name is Thymelus thymelus, referring to its unique smell of the herb thyme. Once persecuted on trout streams, it's now largely left to its own devices. Number three, pike. These are Britain's largest native predatory fish, with thousands of teeth coated in anticoagulants. When it bites its prey, they don't stop bleeding. Its body is streamlined, and fins positioned towards the back give it more thrust when chasing prey. Its mottled green patterns help the pike blend into its environment and stalk small fish, frogs, rodents, and even ducklings. Typically pike are solitary, but during the breeding season, groups of smaller male fish will follow the larger female pike, hoping to mate with her. Number two, perch. Characteristic stripes along its body help it camouflage against predators and catch small prey. Smaller perch tend to move in large shoals, while the adults split off into smaller groups as they get bigger. Perch have two dorsal fins, the front one being full of spines and can be erected when the perch shows interest in something, while the back dorsal fin is soft. Perch don't have teeth, but rough pads lining the mouth to grip slippery prey and engulf small insects and fish whole. Number one, free spine sticklebacks. Although small, these fish can be found in a vast array of habitats from ponds, canals, rivers, lakes, and even salt water. Sticklebacks are unusual among British fish in that they show parental care, with the male assuming the role of guardian. He develops bright breeding colours to attract a mate. Although small, normally no bigger than a couple of inches, they are ferocious predators and take anything that fits in its mouth. A short-lived fish, rarely living longer than a year, they make up for it by reproducing quickly. They are hardy fish and can live in stagnant and even polluted water. Today we're counting down the top 10 non-native freshwater fish in the UK. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button. For this list, we're looking at species of fish that are not originally from the British Isles. Number 10, carp. Introduced into Britain in the 15th century by monks, it was because of their hardiness and quickly packing on the weight that they could be kept in stew ponds ready for a Friday dinner. It wasn't until the 20th century that the explosion of carp angling really took off and this fish was stocked all over the country. Carp come in many forms, from mirror carp, common carp and koi. They all are the same species. Carp are on the edge of their spawning limits in the UK, needing the water to reach between 18 and 20 degrees for successful spawning. So in more northern parts of Britain, they may not spawn every year. Although they don't hibernate, in the winter, carp go into torpor and become less mobile and often stay near the lake bed. Number nine, pumpkin seed. A small American species, they were brought over to the UK for the aquarium trade, but quickly found a way into lakes. They're not a widespread invasive, in England, mostly found in the south. Part of the sunfish family, so-called because of their fondness for basking in the shallows and margins of ponds. They don't grow large, with specimens rarely getting bigger than a few ounces. But large numbers of them can displace local fish populations, and their predatory nature can mean they outcompete local species. Number 8. Topmouth Gudgeon. Sometimes known as a stone morocco and clicker barb, these small Asian cyprinids can be real trouble. They feature on the IUCN Top 100 Invasive Species in the World list, Despite their small size, they're a big problem. Unlike other fish species in Britain, they breed all year round and quickly push out native species and feed on fish eggs and fry. Number seven, sunbleak. In contrast to its invasive status in the UK, they are considered rare or vulnerable throughout much of its native range in Eastern Europe. It's mostly a surface feeding fish, 
found primarily in the southwest of England. They group up in large shoals and sometimes called motherless minnows, owing to the fact that they will appear in ponds after they have dried up, though this is because their eggs are drought resistant and survive in the damp mud. Number 6. Bitterling. Perhaps having the most unique way of breeding of any fish in Britain, the brightly coloured males search for a freshwater mussel and wait for a female to lay her eggs inside of it. He then fertilises them. The young will stay in the mussel for up to a month before leaving the safety of its gill chamber. Bitterling don't grow big, only a few inches, but can form large shoals, often hanging around weeds and feeding on plant matter and small invertebrates. Despite being non-native, bitterling have a low impact on native fish and are nationally rare, but can be abundant in localised pockets. This species of fish was once used for human pregnancy tests. Female specimens were injected with the urine of the woman to be tested. If the woman was pregnant, the hormones in the urine would cause the fish's ovipositors to protrude. Number 5. Wells Catfish 70 of these tadpole-looking critters were introduced by the Duke of Bedford into Woburn Abbey Lakes over 130 years ago, and some by legal and many illegal releases are now found all over England in many fishing lakes and worryingly some rivers. They are apex predators, reaching sizes of 246 pounds in the Spanish Ebro. While in Britain, our colder climate limits the growth but can still reach 100 pounds. Although they look slow moving, Wells catfish are efficient hunters and use their large barbules to sense prey, even in murky water at night. The dorsal fin is somewhat of a joke, serving very little purpose. Wells will build a nest and guard it, having up to 100,000 eggs, though on average only 10% will survive. Number 4. Goldfish. One of the best known fish, they originally came from China as a wild carp. Every now and then, a freak of nature would appear with golden or yellow colour. Fish like these would normally get eaten by predators, but Buddhist monks who bred the carp for food would keep these brightly coloured carp in mercy ponds where they would breed together and produce more little fish, thus the goldfish was born. Although they easily can be seen by predators, it doesn't stop them taking over ponds and interbreeding with carp inclusions, polluting the natural gene pool. The collective now for goldfish is a troubling, and some of them that are kept in the right conditions can live up to 45 years old. The five second memory is also a myth, as experiments have proven that they can remember up to three months and even be taught tricks. Number three, grass carp. The slender looking carp species was actually introduced to Britain on purpose as a means of weed control. The carp eat large quantities of aquatic plants, which can damage boat propellers if left unchecked. The conditions for spawning in the UK aren't right for them, so they don't breed, needing a warm, constant flow of water. Although they mostly eat weeds, they will take anglers baits and known to be a hard fighting fish. Although called a carp, it's only distantly related to the common carp and is the only member of its family. They have also become a popular pond fish, though because of their vegan habits, aren't always best with water plants. Number 2. Rainbow Trout Introduced to the UK from North America in the early 20th century, the rainbow trout can now be found in every continent except Antarctica. The vast majority of rainbow trout are triploids, which are stocked into fishing lakes. These fish have three chromosomes instead of the normal two, so are incapable of breeding. There is, however, some populations of spawning rainbows in Britain, most notably the Derbyshire Y, where they found their way by accident over a hundred years ago, and have since become established, though cause little impact on the native brown trout and grayling. Unlike brown trout, the Y rainbows are spring spawners, and have a heavy spotted pattern. They have a form that runs to sea called the steelhead, which can reach sizes of 50 pounds. They take on a more silver colour when out at sea. Number 1. Xander. Another introduction by the Duke of Bedford in the late 1800s, Xander was stocked from Germany into Woburn Abbey Lakes. From there, they would be put into the Cambridgeshire drains 
and then many fish got transported by anglers into the Midland canals and rivers like the Severn, Thames and Trent. Sometimes known as pipe perch, they are in fact their own species, but are a member of the perch family. Large eyes help them hunt in the darkness and murk of waterways, and have large fangs to help them grip prey. A prized eating fish in continental Europe, they are similar to bass in taste. They will form shovels together and have large spiky dorsal fins. Large numbers of Xander can affect prey fish numbers, but the cannibalistic nature of Xander means that the bigger ones often control the smaller ones, not to mention pike, which will feed on young Xander. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this vid, why not check out this other video right here? If you can, please subscribe to the channel, it only takes a couple of seconds and it really helps me out. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.